The Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science at Memorial University has a rich tradition of excellence in engineering education that dates back to the 1930s. For the first 40 years, a three-year diploma program in engineering was offered, with graduates of the program moving on to other institutions to complete their degree. All that changed in 1969, when Memorial University offered its own degree-granting cooperative engineering program in three disciplines, civil, mechanical, and electrical engineering, as well as a Master of Engineering in the field of ocean engineering. I, I think the biggest thing that we, we noticed was the broader range of faculty that were all, all of a sudden available in there. Um, before 1969, when the program really started, uh, there were only maybe seven or eight faculty in the whole engineering school. And they sort of uh, handled all the different courses. And uh, I think the biggest thing among uh, my classmates was uh, a little bit envious of um, the ability to stay study at home or in, in Newfoundland the whole way through. And the fact that it was a co-op program, which we didn't have. And I think the co-op program was a, a major step forward in providing a much more rounded and versatile education. My first impression of the uh, engineering program was that uh, uh, I was starting a brand new program. They had a, uh, a previous program, a well-respected program, three years at Mon. After that, move off to places like uh, Dalhousie to complete the degree. We were in a brand new program. Great promise. Uh, it was a co-op program that attracted a lot of us, but there was also a sense of great change and uh, newness. Many of the profs were new profs, and uh, not only to Memorial, but to, to being a professor as well. And practically every class, uh, the profs were, it was the first class that they taught on that subject. But the idea of being able to graduate from a pro-op program to uh, get that experience along the way and to help pay the bills along the way made a big difference to a lot of us. And, uh, you know, it was, it was very important to, uh, to be part of that program. When we started the uh, engineering faculty, it's interesting to know that was 50 years ago. And so the time round about of that year, there was the moon landing. So there was a great deal of interest in space. And we were starting a new faculty. And we couldn't go into space. so. We were thinking, well, what is Newfoundland? What space is important? It's the ocean. So we decided, Dr. Angus Bruno was the first dean, and the faculty, and we had discussions. We decided ocean engineering was going to be our main thrust of research. That was our space. The ocean research of the 1970s led to projects involving iceberg towing and LORA, the Low Temperature Ocean Research Activity, a cylindrical laboratory for conducting underwater research. These types of projects in turn helped to contribute to the development of the province's offshore oil industry. By the mid-1970s, Seacor and Nordco were established. The NRC was relocated from Ottawa and St. John's was well underway to becoming the hub for cold ocean research and development. Over the years, the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science has had a tremendous impact on the social and economic sectors of the province. Our Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science has made so many major contributions and impacts on the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Not only our current students through co-op education, what our professors in the research that they're doing, but also the uh, accomplishments of our alumni of whom we are so proud of. Many have gone on to uh, build industries and companies in this province, whether it's the offshore oil and gas industry or the high-tech sector. We have entrepreneurs that have started companies and have been leaders at companies. They've built the economy and to the prosperity that we're seeing here today and our and our wonderful standard of living in the province. When the degree program was established 50 years ago, one of the biggest decisions that was made was to make it a cooperative engineering program. 
students would earn money and valuable real-world experience at work sites across the province and around the world. I think uh, the biggest benefit of the co-op program for preparing me uh, for the real world was allowing um, myself and other students to get a taste of what they could do and also what they decide they're not going to do. So you go into a semester and a work term and you're like, oh, that looks really neat. I'd like to do some more of that. And then maybe you get the opportunity to try something that you know maybe one of your coworkers had, on your work term had done. Um, or you could say, oh, I really have tried this this semester and I don't want to do it. I think uh, so it lets you do a lot of trial run. Um, so that's, I think, the biggest benefit of, of the co-op work terms at, at Mon. It's just invaluable. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about what you're capable of. You learn a lot about your abilities. You learn how to deal with all these different people. I had the opportunity to work with some really, really excellent engineers, and some of them I continue to work with even in my career when I graduated. You know, we ran cross paths. And um, so in terms of preparing me for the real world, that's about as real as it got, you know, and, and it's unfortunate. At that time, I think engineering and business were the only two co-op programs on campus. I think it's expanded substantially since then, for sure, but I, I almost uh, felt sorry for all the other students who were on campus who didn't get this opportunity to be able to, you know, just really walk out of a, out of a degree program and really walk into a workplace and sort of know what's expected and know what you can do. Um, so that's really the, the key, piece, key piece there. I remember when I graduated, I went to work with General Electric in Peterborough, many engineers from across the country. And I remember my supervisor saying, you guys from these co-op programs, you really know how to hit the ground running. You've got that uh, foundational knowledge of actual work as opposed to education. The engineering and applied science program has evolved over the years responding to changes in industry and technology. One constant throughout the history of the program is the immersion of students into the engineering culture. They develop the ability to work together, to delegate, to problem solve. They learn teamwork and the engineering way. Looking at Memorial and the time I spent uh, while I was there, I did a mechanical degree um, and I think the biggest thing I learned from that was just how to solve tough problems, um, which prepared me to go on then and start a company building software to solve hard mechanical problems. Um, so we're not directly doing mechanical engineering, but every single person we work with is. Um, and it really quickly allowed us to go out and prototype new ideas. I now do product design. I've now got a, a business flavor, which I got from doing some of the courses like Memorial's Entrepreneurship Program and MCE. Um, but I think what it really does is it teaches you how to learn um, and then gives you the ability to practice that. So whether it's through a capstone project, an internship, and in my case probably the most applicable one, the student teams, um, the engineering faculty always wanted to see us succeed there and I think that directly translates then to going out and starting something yourself. In recent years, the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science has seen major growth and other proud milestones. For the fourth year in a row, they had the highest percentage of female undergraduate students in Canada at 27%. A record high 1,200 co-op students were placed this past year, and the graduate student enrollments have doubled to over 700 graduate students since 2012. The Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science is home to nine prestigious research chairs held by internationally renowned faculty in fields such as oil and gas research, offshore safety, harsh environment engineering, environmental systems, entrepreneurship, subsea communications, and seafloor mechanics. A common theme is often ocean technology, and the ocean and naval architectural engineering discipline continues to be the only ocean engineering program in Canada. The faculty's leadership, along with business, in the Memorial Centre for Entrepreneurship has strengthened the entrepreneurial culture among students in all faculties and schools at Memorial and had a dramatic impact on the provincial economy. It's been a real honour and privilege to serve uh, such an exceptional faculty that has talented professors, dedicated staff, co-op coordinators and students who are exceptionally talented. 
I was the only female engineer uh, for for long time at the company and the first one to do graduate uh, degree in ocean engineering and was not so many females in that field so I tried to increase the number of uh, females uh, and, and that's why I established uh, WISE in uh, early 1988 to introduce science and engineering as an option for females so they can uh, they can consider this uh, science and engineering as one of their options and their field and and that's really impacted a lot on the, uh, the number of uh, females uh, which increased from 1% in early 80s to now about 30% females in engineering. Some of the biggest changes that I've witnessed as Dean during my time has been uh, how we've embraced interdisciplinary collaboration and partnerships, in particular with other faculties. For example, we have really uh, expanded our uh, program offerings in biomedical engineering, for example, with streams in mechanical and electrical engineering. We've partnered with the Faculty of Business Administration on a Center for Entrepreneurship that has grown to include uh, all of the faculties and schools across the university. We've also had a number of organizational changes. We've created departments within the faculty that have really enhanced the identity of who we are as uh, separate disciplines of engineering. And another big change that I've noticed is really the increase of research intensiveness that we've seen in the faculty. If we look at the, the ratio of graduate students uh, per faculty member, for example, we are among the highest in Canada. We've doubled the number of citations to research articles and made a significant impact in the past several years of the, the research that we're doing and the impact that has on the, on the community, the province, and internationally. The program itself um, prepares you to look at things um, really like analytically and solve problems. Like if I took one thing from engineering, uh, it's how to take a hard thing, a hard challenge, and go out and solve that. It was a difficult program and you needed, uh, you needed colleagues to help you through the program. You, you may have done one really well in one course, but you might have needed support in another course. So this sense of team and working together was an important part of Memorial. And uh, that sense of team carries into the workplace. And, uh, I think that uh, not only the individuals that you continue to associate with, but also the concepts of team and working together was an important part of graduating from Memorial. I had lots of good support from uh, the, my supervisors and uh, from the technicians and the lab, which I used to do some of the lab work and computer work and continue on my development of all the models and the technology which was quite a base for me to start my own uh, engineering company. So I really acknowledge the, uh, my first start with engineering and, and of course becoming too as a professional engineer with the association of professional engineer that's helped me a lot too on, in, in the long term of, of, of my career. Because of my engineering degree at MUN, I am able to contribute more to my province than I could have ever thought I was going to or I could have dreamed and because I did that here at home at Mun, I'm incredibly grateful for that. It was a challenging program, the most challenging thing I've ever done in my life even since but, uh, but it was uh, certainly a program that I don't ever regret having found my way into. Because of my engineering degree from Memorial I am who I am today and I am where I am today. When I look back on my time serving as Dean here in the faculty, often I feel overwhelmed by the accomplishments and successes of our students, alumni, faculty members, co-op coordinators. It really is um, very overwhelming and I feel so proud and honoured to be part of this success story, which is Memorial Engineering.